Matthew chapter 7. Judge not, they be not judged. End of the, end of the book. That's where everybody quotes to you. Judge not, least ye be judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. With what measure ye meet, rule or standard, it shall be measured to you again. James 7 1. We got to judge things all around us. Is it right to cross the road? Is it right to light a match? Is it right to go through a green light? Is it right to write a check? Is it right to use a credit card? Is it right to do what God wants us to do? Is it right not to do what God wants us to do? We're judging all around. But when somebody comes up to you and says, Judge not, they should be judged. They don't want to hear the Bible. And that's a compliment because they know that God's a judge and they know the Bible condemns their wicked life. But by coming up to you saying, Judge not, at least you be judged, not quoting the rest of the verse, realizing now they have opened up their big mouth. They don't want to hear from God. The measure that they meet, I don't want to hear it. So when they have a time of need, what do you think God's going to say to them for saying, Judge not, at least you be judged? But with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. You don't want to hear my word. You don't want him to talk. You don't want to hear the Bible. You wait till you need me. Judge not, least you be judged. I'm not going to listen. People need to realize you got to shut your big mouth. Because you get yourself in trouble. Now, the verse 1 and 2 is telling you. If you judge someone by mercy, God will judge you by mercy. If you're harsh on people, God will be harsh on you. That's what it's saying. And why beholdest thou the moat? That's a simple, small little particle. Nothing particular. That's in thy brother's eye. But considers not the beam. That's a large uh, stick, large uh, two by four, large log. That's in thy own eye. That's self-righteousness. Well, uh, look, at the, look at the problem you got. Look at what you're doing. And never mind, look at all the filth you're doing. Look at all the sins you're doing. You're looking at someone's one sin, and you're not doing anything with your sin. How wilt thou say to thy brother, Jewish, there's no Christians here. But yet the principle right here is good and applicable to the church. Let me pull out the moat that's in thy eye and behold the beam that's in thy own eye. You can't see real because you've got a problem with your eyes. You think you can see, but you can't. So when you judge others and you got problems yourself, thou hypocrite. We talked about hip hypocrites in verse 6. They, they, they uh, they give they give for people noticing they're giving they pray out loud they fast with them with a face look what I'm doing add to it you're judging other people's and you've got your own sins so when somebody comes up to you judge not least you be judged and they've never trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior they have got sins in their life that are not under the blood coming to you you might have a few sins that are under the blood that you're repenting to God and you're getting them washed in the blood and they have never been washed and if they are Christians and they're living such like that you know they're not pleasing God thou hypocrite that's what God says of them first cast out the beam of thy own eye take care of your problem first check yourself out before the brethren and this is talking to Jewish people, but this is great for a Christian. And then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mole out of thy brother's eye. Take care of yourself first. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. Well, let's, 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 let's quote the verse. Isn't that a great verse? Let's put it on a sampler. What would be holy that, that you would give to the dogs in the Old Testament? Me? off the altar something that someone has brought and dedicated to God 
Oh, I didn't finish this this chicken. Uh, here you go, Fido. Dogs were unclean. Dogs are also Gentiles. Don't give to the Gentiles something that's holy. How's that one? You want to lay that one down? Neither cast your pearls before the swine. You did see what Peter said about dogs and swine, didn't you? That it's a male and a female, and they're deceptive, and they're against God. So don't give your, your nice pearls to a filthy woman, according to Peter. Don't give that which is holy to the Gentiles. Least thou trample them under their feet. They're not going to. They're just going to walk all over it. And turn again and rend you. Isaiah sixty six three. And you're not to take your brethren. The Jewish people were holy. And cast them to the Gentiles, or cast them according to what Peter said. You're not to bring them to false teachers, dogs and swine. You turn them over to deceptive people, Jude, uh, Peter, speaks about destruction. Ask, and it shall be given you. That's a great thing. How many times did, did Paul ask for that thorn to be taken out of his side? When did God answer it? Seek and it shall find. Okay. Paul went and asked the Lord. He sought the Lord. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Didn't, wouldn't you say Paul asked, seek and knock? Three times. For every one that seeketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. And, him, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Now this is not a blank check. James 4.2 some people think, you know, you just pray and God, God's obligated to give. This prayer was answered to Paul by God. What was the answer? No. We don't want that prayer. I just had a prayer in my life right now. And, you know, I said, Lord, if I don't ask it, you may not answer. It. And if you do answer, I'm going to do the thing that I'm praying about. And if you don't ever answer, I just, you know, the, James said... I, I receive not because I ask not. And I'm not saying, okay, Lord, I'm naming it and claiming it because that's foolish. But if God were to answer that prayer, and you know, I could take care of some things. If he doesn't, well, then I'll just keep on doing what I'm doing. I'm asking God. I'm seeking God. I'm not going to. If the answer is no, 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 then fine. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread? Bread, that's a nice thing. That seems to be a staple in the Bible time. Will you give him a stone? Dad, can I have some rye bread? Here's a rock, son. Lamentations 4.4. Or if he asks a fish, will you give him a snake, a serpent? A serpent's an unclean food. You say, well, what's that illustration? If ye then, being good, evil, know how to give food, good gifts unto your children, look what, look what Jesus has said about the people he's talking about. He's going to give an illustration of a father to a child, a man father to his son or his daughter. Dad, can I have some bread? And door, Dad, can I have some fish? Yeah, I'm sure here. If you're evil and you give that good to your daughter or your son, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? James 1.14 Now, judge not, at least you be judged. And here's a, here's a beam that's in your eye. And then, you evil father, you give good gifts to your children. Somebody's in this crowd that Jesus is, ad is addressing, and they're wicked. See, when I say ask, seek, and knock, 
of the Father. Now, you just rest assured, you know what? God is greater than you, a sinner. And this encourages us not to name it, claim it. This encourages us to ask and pray to God. There are some people who say, well, I can't ask God. I have no right to ask God. And you'll, you'll find these people. I have no right to pray to God, ask God for anything for myself. That's not what Jesus just said. James, if you read what James says, he said, listen, you, you receive not because you ask not. And if you didn't receive it, it might be because it was lustful. But at least ask. Now, I wouldn't go as far as to say if you have a missing arm or missing leg, oh, Lord, grow that thing back. That's the odds of that. Highly ridiculous. Now, if you got cancer. Oh, the doctor told me it's terminal and it's stage four. I'm not just ask God and see what he'll do. The mechanic can't find anything wrong with it. And there's absolutely and Why don't you just ask God? See what he'll do. This person, they're just going to hell. And there's, why don't you ask God? Oh, my bills are overwhelmed. Why don't you just ask God? That's what Jesus said. And don't just go up to God and say, God, can I have it? And then go away. Ask, seek, and knock. Now, an illustration, I know somebody personally. Well, I'm going to ask God for a wife, okay? You ask God, are you going to seek? No, I'm going to stay right here and, and she's going to parachute from heaven. Absolutely not. Chances are she's not going to come to your door and there she is with a pizza or something like that. That's not how God, you got to ask the Lord and some things you got to go get. You know, Lord, I, I want to be in the ministry, okay? Now, you ask. Now go seek the knowledge of the Bible. Go knock on, on a seminary or a, or a church that teaches the Bible and get what you need to look, know so the Lord can use you. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do, you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Now this sums up the whole Old Testament. Do unto others as others do unto me. That's the golden rule. And that golden rule is Old Testament. Wouldn't you think Paul would love to do that? Oh, you want to stone me? Hey, I'm back alive. All right, give me some rocks. Wait a minute. Now, I had, a, I had a preacher accuse me of you know, being one of them Pauline doctrines. No, I'm not Pauline doctrine, but Paul was allowed by the Holy Spirit to write the church age books. So I can use those church age books to say, can I do this if it's in Matthew, if it's in the Old Testament? My final authority is the Holy Spirit. Now, if, if I'm a Pauline person all the way, 100%, there's no Old Testament. I'm not going to go up to a judge and smack him across the face because I didn't like his answer. Because that's what Paul did. I take Jesus' example standing before Pilate. Just, okay. Say what I need to say and let it go. But this is, you know, if he asks for a coat, give him, a, give him your, your vest. If he wants to go one mile, go two. That's the law. In the church age, we find the gospel, uh, we find John in his epistles. If they don't love you, we're supposed to love them. Now see, grace in the church age has overrid the golden rule. You take someone to court. You know what Paul said about court between Christians? Just suffer the loss and don't go. If he's done you wrong... Love them, forgive them, pray for them, and take the loss. 
into the Corinthian church. Enter ye the straight gate. This is today. There's a straight gate. For wide is the gate. There's a wide gate. There's two gates. One straight and one's wide. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. A big fat 18 lane highway is the, is the broad gate, the wide gate. 18, 18 lanes. I just picked that number out of blue. That lead, I mean, broad is the way that lead us to destruction. All right, let's see. And many, many, many there be which go in thereafter. Proverbs 4, 14, 15. Acts 19, 35. Luke 16, 15. You know what the Bible said? We've had people come up to, I've had people come up to, where's your crowd of people? The Bible says there is no crowd. Some will say all men will be saved at the final judgment. Not according to this. Many will go the gate of destruction, the broad way. And there's a wonderful painting of all these people that they're going off into hell. And the righteous people are walking this little pathway across the cross into glory. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth into life so that destruction according to scripture with scripture is hell verse 14 is heaven 13 rebellion destruction number 14 7 and 7 which leadeth into life few there be that find it so how many people will be saved in the church age and with Jesus teaching the ministry few how many will you find in hell many what's a few I have no idea what's a many I a lot of people and that you can apply today chapter 7 is safe it's safe to read chapter 7 Five and six, you're in a little shaky ground there for today's church age ministry. Beware. Ooh, look at Jesus saying, beware. Warning. Don't touch. Don't trespass him. Stay away. Of false prophets. So you see, Jesus has warned us already now. There will be false prophets. Now he's going to tell you about those false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. They're going to look like sheep. So when you look at them, they look like Christians. As far as the Jew, they look like Jewish people. But inwardly, inside, they are ravening, that's praying, ready to hunt, to kill and eat wolves and wolves are the dog family chapter 7 verse 6 so Jesus already interpreted to you what that dog was in verse 6 Peter backs up what Jesus just said in 6 I mean 7 6 and 7 15 by telling us that that dog is a false prophet the male and he returns to his own vomit, his own scum, what he couldn't stomach. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Even wicked men produce fruits. How do you know these false prophets? Look at what is around their tree. Look around. Pick up that fruit and say, okay, that thing was rotten. That one's black over there. That ain't no good. You know it was a fruit that got us into sin? 
Do men gather grapes of thorns? No. Grapes you will eat. Grapes you can make wine. Grapes you can have raisins. Thorns will pinch your fingers, will give you blood. Thorns are a curse. So there's a grape and there's a curse. Figs. Figs is a type of Israel. Figs are good. In one of the kings, figs was a healing of thistles. Thistle is nothing. It's just a weed. It blocks growth. Look at that guy. Is he producing thorns and thistles? Weeds. Thorns and thistles don't have fruit. But Jesus said that's their fruit. Fruit would be excess of money. Fruit would be lying. Fruit would be misleading the, God, the, the Bible to think something that is not. A fruit would be that uh, folks prophesying about things. It's deceitful fruit. It's bitter and sour fruit. A good tree, that's not the false prophets, bring it forth. Wait, where am I? 17? Seven, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. It's normal. That's the rule of nature. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. There are some trees that have fruit on it you cannot eat or you should not eat. And there are trees out there that you grab the fruit and you just sit down under that tree and enjoy it. Notice there's no third tree. In the eyes of God, it's either yay or nay. In the eyes of God, it's either good or it's evil. Either eyes of God, there's only two things, heaven or hell. In the eyes of God, it's either God or Satan. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, right? Now, warning, is hewed down and cast into the fire. You cannot apply that to the church age. And yet there are churches out there that say that verse proves that if you don't do good, good works, you'll burn in hell. There's no Christians. There's no death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's alive and well talking to Jews. Under the law. Where works are a mandatory thing for them to be saved. If you don't do any good works, you will be brought to hell. That's not church age. How would you teach that verse according to what Paul wrote to Corinthians? Every tree that brings forth good fruit... Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. You can't really apply that and say our works. The bad fruit we produce is burned, but not the tree. And we lose a reward. We lose a crown. And you can't even apply that to what Paul teaches about the judgment seat of Christ because we're the tree. We've been grafted in. And notice how he likens men to trees. That is a thing that runs in the Bible over and over and over and over. Trees have a relationship to men. And men have a relationship to trees. People love trees. You probably have to probably get pretty soon. The way things are, you probably have people be able to marry a plant. That's disgusting. I don't believe I just said that. And it'll probably happen. Verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. That's one of the first verses that I've learned. And I still know that. I may not be able to say chapter and verse. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. If he's on a radio claiming that he needs a thousand dollars and driving a nice fat car and send us your prayer letters with your money. Don't send a prayer letter without a money. And nineteen ninety five for this cassette tape and we'll send you a little hanky. Or a woman 
preaching when that defiles the Bible, or you're listening to the program, oh, this sounds good, and then he's quoting from a non-King James Bible, what, <coughs> what are the fruits? Well, Jesus Christ is coming in 1914, was 2016, what's the fruit? This church has built churches and built churches have gone out, send missionaries, and they're, they're spreading the gospel and it's getting all out, and people are being saved, people are being helped, and the people love the Lord, they want what's the fruit? A guy marries a woman, they have children, and he, the children are serving the Lord and doing right, and the, the grandchildren are serving the Lord and doing right, and the great-grandchildren out there serving the Lord, and you may have one bad or two bad apples or three bad apples in the group, but if that tree's got good fruit, and it pleases the Lord, now trees do produce bad fruit. We are all sinners, for all has sinned, come to short of glory of God. I've got plenty of bad fruit around my tree. And yet I also have good fruit. Now if I don't take that bad fruit and put it under the blood of Jesus Christ, that bad fruit is also going to show up the judgment seat of Christ, and it will burn up and I will lose a reward for that bad fruit being around my tree. And if I confess my sins and wash that fruit in the blood of the Lord Jesus, you look around my tree and it's like, hey, where are all the bad fruit? God's forgotten. It's under the blood. Now, Satan will sometimes come up to your tree and say, hey, remember that bad fruit? Oh, yeah, yeah. And God's like, we look down the ground. Oh, Lord. Remember that sin? Oh, Lord. I'm look down the ground. Oh, Lord. I Look down the ground. Oh, where is it? Where's what? Where's that bad fruit? I don't know what you're talking about. Why do you keep mentioning this fruit? I don't know no I don't see the fruit. Now I see that bad fruit. You want to take care of that fruit? Isn't it great that when when I got bad fruit and I put them on the first John 1 9 on the blood of Jesus, he takes that fruit, the Bible says he throws as far as east from west, and it never comes back under my tree. Never. And under my tree, I have a gift. Ooh. And that gift is the gift of God, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I take that gift as a tree and I, I give it to other people. How's that one? So every person produces fruit. Now everybody is like into a tree. Lost people have no good fruit. In the account of God. I don't care if they give money. I don't care if they save animals. I don't care if they walk old ladies across the street. I don't care if they go to church. I don't care if they're 13 degree. I don't care what they are. If they're not washed in the blood of Jesus Christ under the gospel that Jesus died for their sin, was buried and rose again according to the scripture for their sin, there is absolutely no good fruit from that tree. It is wicked. It will be cut down. That tree will be put into hell. Now, if a guy is saved, I'm saved. There's good fruit around me. And there's also bad fruit, I'm sorry to say. There are some people out there who are a tree and only fruit they have is rotten fruit, bad fruit. They have no good fruit at all, but they're a tree. They can never not be a tree. For a Christian, can you go up to a tree and say, you're no more a tree? No. See, the world today in America, they have an identity crisis. We don't know who we are. I'm a tree of God. I've got fruit, and my fruit better be good fruit. And if i got bad fruit, I better put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. And so should you. And when people look at me, when I preach on the streets and I pass out gospel tracts and I be a Christian, people look at me, oh, what's, what's that fruit you got? And your fruit is not in a closet. It's for everyone to look around and say, oh, wow, look, look what you're doing. And there's all kinds of fruit. They got all kinds of names. I say, well, Galatians 5. It has all fruits of the of the flesh, adultery, murder, killing, lying, stealing, blah, 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 blah. There's also fruit, 
love, joy, peace, temperance, long-suffering. There are nine fruits for a Christian that can fall off your tree. And there's a whole mess of other fruits that are bad that can fall off your tree too, as a Christian. Not everyone that saith unto me, Oh, this is a Lord, Lord shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. What's that one? Well, I'm a Christian, but I want to be knocking on doors. You're turning people away. I don't do that as a Christian. I let my love, my church, what we do, do de do boo boo. shall enter in the kingdom of heaven again kingdom of heaven is that spiritual kingdom you can apply this one today Paul tells us that there are other Jesuses notice a small l o r I mean the, the capital L small o r d all right now this is where you can apply it to the church age. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is heaven. What, what is the will of the Father today? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So you can apply that one today. There are people who call on Jesus. There are people who call on the Lord. There are people that call on the Father. But they won't go to heaven. There are some people that said this prayer. They're not going to heaven. There's some people in the church and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey, we're singing a song. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, Jesus, Jesus. You can sing Jesus all you want. But if you have not done the will of the Father to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you will not be in heaven. You have been deceived by the deceivers and you'll be cast in the lake of fire with burning forever. You imagine someone going to hell thinking they've done right. That right there, they call me Lord, Lord. That's religion. They think they're doing something in religion for the Lord. Now watch this. Many shall say to me, let's go back to verse 13. Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the way, which leadeth to destruction, and many. Not all people, not 100% of the population get saved. Many will say to me, Jesus. You know what Jesus just told you there? Guess who's going to be standing or sitting at the great white throne judgment? If these people are not going to heaven, they're not going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. What judgment do they show up at? The great white throne judgment. And what's going to happen at the great white throne judgment? Many shall say to me, in that day, that day of judgment, the day of judgment at hand, behold, now is the day of salvation. But this day is the judgment day. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied thy name? Lord, you're coming back in 1914. Oh, Lord. Many have done that. And in thy name, 2 Corinthians 11.4, have cast out devils. Oh yeah, they move, they make movies like that. The Roman Catholic Church, I have seen the exorcisms and stuff like that from the Roman Catholic Church. You can find videos of oriental places where they will, you know, guys possess and they'll do all what they do. That's religion. And these people will walk up to Jesus Christ at great white throne. Well, did I prophesy? Lord? Yeah, you're a liar. I didn't come back in 1914, did I? I didn't manifest myself into that bread and wine, did I? No, I did not send no angel to New York. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Oh, we gave money to the shoeless people in in Africa so they can have shoes and Korans in a box yeah that's wonderful that's wonderful works but that wasn't believing on Jesus Christ to be saved 
See, you can have wonderful works and not be God's wonderful works. Ooh. There are a whole bunch of people out there who think they're doing wonderful works and that's not what God said to do. It's not his wonderful works. Imagine going to hell doing wonderful works. And then, and then, this is a scary verse. You want to make a, 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 a scary movie? Be very short. Let's put this verse on the screen, the movie, and then you're done. Then will I, Jesus Christ, God, manifested in the flesh, the second member of the Trinity, profess unto them, the many, I never knew you. Lord, didn't I kill all those people in a bar for you? Lord, didn't I kill all those children? Lord, didn't I kill those high school play people? Lord, didn't I kill them at the McDonald's? Lord, didn't I pull that bomb in Jerusalem? Lord, didn't I shed the, cut off the heads of those people? Lord, didn't I kill those Christians on the faggots? Lord, didn't I take care of that family that had a Bible in their house and we destroyed it? Lord, didn't I never knew you. But Lord, didn't I eat your body and you drink your blood every second? I never knew you. But Lord, didn't I teach in the seminary all those years and graduate all those students? That I never knew you. Depart from me. I will never hear Jesus say that to me. Depart from me. Never. Those are three words as a saved Christian you'll never hear Jesus say to you. And you never want to hear those words from Jesus. You are in serious trouble when he says, depart from me. What's he say about prophesying in his name? What's he say about casting out devils in his name? What's he say about wonderful works in his name? Name, name, name. Ye that work iniquity. That's Jesus that said that. That's no, don't get mad at me. I read to you at a King James Bible, Matthew 7, 23. Jesus Christ said your works in his name without believing on him is iniquity. I give to you UNICEF iniquity. I'm a deacon iniquity. Jesus said that. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, the word of God. It's only been, what, when did Jesus start, what chapter did he start preaching in? He started preaching in chapter 4, 3, when he came to John the Baptist. It's only been four, four, four chapters so far, but Jesus said a lot more than four chapters. John said if we could write all the books, you couldn't contain all the books that Jesus did. But he says these sayings of mine, all of them, and do with them. I do something that Paul said for my salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Jesus didn't say that. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Now you can apply this to a Christian. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. I'm a wise man. Christians who don't do that, we'll read about it. The rain descended, right? rain coming down. And the floods came, a lot of rain. River overflowing. And the winds blew, it's a stormy time. And beat upon the house. Oh, persecution, troubles, trials, tribulation. Look at that. Somebody who's doing the word of God is going to get storms in their life. Somebody, somebody will preach to you, oh, you get saved. All your life is going to be wonderful. Why is there rain? Why is there floods? Why is there wind? Why is it beating down my house? 
and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock, the rock Jesus Christ. So you're likened to a man that's built a house. And everyone, no, there's only two people, that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not. So there are two ways. There's the straight gate and the broad gate. There's a narrow way. There's a broad way. There's a man that doeth the, the sayings of Jesus. And there's a man that doeth it not. There's a good tree. There's an evil tree. It's only two options. And doeth him not shall be likened unto a foolish man. You're either a wise man or you're a foolish man. And watch what he does. Which buildeth his house upon the sand. Now Jesus comes right out and says, you know, you know what this guy's problem is? He's building on sand. In Luke 6.49 it says earth, dirt. He doesn't put a foundation on a rock. He comes down to Florida and builds a house. The rain descended. And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. Oh, he's suffering too. The doer of the word and the non-doer of the word get the same storm. And it fell. The house fell. And great was the fall of it. Destruction beyond destruction. Because he would not do what the word of God told him to do. He didn't study to show himself approved unto God, a right unto God. Oh boy. A man that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You got two idiots today out there building the ark. Find that in the in the New Testament to go build an ark. Why are you doing that? Why are you wasting the money? And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings. We're done with the Sermon on the Mount. The people were astonished at his doctrine, his teaching. That's what doctrine means. Man, they're looking at him. They got their mouths open, their wise up. Wow, that was a mouthful. For he taught them as one having authority, and, I bet, and not as the scribes of religion. He had more power in his tongue than the scribes. Because he was of the Father, capital F. And when he was done with their talk, man, he, they just sat there like, wow. And it wasn't his voice. It was the way he taught and what he taught. It amazed them. It, 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 they made, it made them to think. It made them to digest. There's somebody here that's talking to us and it's unlike our scribes ever that saying 29 is a remarkable outstanding statement of Jesus Christ and his word verse 24 do these sayings of mind that this guy is remarkable 